If you give me access to your code base, I can produce about a thousand API tests that are fantastic in roughly a day. So sh before we get into that, shout out everyone who uh, saw yesterday's video. If you didn't, it was about cursor, AI, future of testing. Today, we're gonna to talk about API testing specific because it's an area that I think cursor excels as well as some of these other tools. And so with that, let's get into it. Oftentimes for a lot of companies, API testing can be a backbone of testing. It fits right in the middle where it's not the UX UI, you don't have to do the white box testing or understand the unit test. API testing can do a lot of the business logic testing without dealing with the headache sometimes that is the UX UI. So also turns out that it's an area that tools like Cursor excel at. What I want to show you is a little bit about how I can now produce fantastic API tests. What I also want to call out, because people seem to sort of push back on this, it's producing the same API tests that as a human I would write. And it's not doing anything brilliant. It's not doing anything that's like, oh my God, I've never heard of this. What it's doing is saving me time. And that's the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this. AI, whether you call it AI or not, these large language models, they're not doing something revolutionary in the output. They're doing what a great tester would already do, particularly if they're driven by a great tester, and they're saving you a tremendous amount of time doing it, right? Where writing a thousand API tests previously would have taken me like 90 days, this can do it in a day. So let me show you it. I have my Mern app, the sales app that we use where we basically help writing cold emails. What I want to start by showing is the two functions. So the way that cursor has, you have your chat function and then you have what's called the composer function. I'm going to first do the chat function to show you its abilities. Ironically, right now we're stuck down in position. I've yet to pay for a pro, mostly because I want to argue that this is completely free. And if you're paying for AI tools that are not just large language models, you should stop. Let's get to it. So in this case, it's going to find the dependencies. It's going to give me an answer. When you think about API testing, what do you care about, right? Well, you want to know what dependencies the, the, the body need, right? So if the body is going to post kind of a um, post data, and actually I don't like that answer. So I meant what data dependencies exist if I want to make a test for posting an email using the endpoint. And this is actually a really good example. AI is not perfect. AI will give you bad answers. This was not my favorite answer. I knew what I was trying to get out of it. Sometimes it's not going to give you the best answer. Now, people are going to say this is slower than doing the actual test. And this portion is probably slower than doing the actual test. I'm just doing this portion to show you its ability to educate you on some of these things and educate you on these dependencies. So based on the current file in the context of testing the post email endpoint, which is basically I want to post an email to the endpoint. I need a job with a job ID, which I know. I need email content. I need contact information. I need user authentication. So it knows already what IDs are needed and what data needs to be created in order to do that. And then I could even ask a follow-up question, which is, do you see any evidence that the configuration of these dependencies might affect the test? You cannot just rely on AI to give you the right answer, but if you know how to do testing, I think through these things, you can use it to go faster. So we're going to ask it, right? However, there are things with noting, right? Error handling, authentication, don't love that answer, right? So education wise, helpful, but not the core of this video. What is the core is the ability for it to generate this stuff. So what we're going to do is I'm going to write a test. I'm going to ask it, write me a test for the post email endpoint that seeds the data. Let's do this uh, endpoint. I'm going to then hit go. It's going to do it. We're going to initial. Also, it sometimes has different libraries, not all of them the best, right? And this is where, once again, AI does vary. I could have said use a certain testing framework or library. What I'm really interested in showing you, though, is its ability to actually generate it. So here we now have a test. It's going to accurately seed a new job. It then is going to seed a new lead using information it got from the job. It's then going to see day contact, all of which are necessary for me to post an email. It's then going to try to post the email and then it's going to expect all of the proper stuff. Now you have to double check this, right? Now we're going to accept that. Give me 10 negative tests for this 
endpoint as well. And we're going to hit go. And what we're going to see is it's going to produce 10 more negative tests. So when I say it's going to produce a thousand tests, right? The effort here is really just this stuff, right? It's, oh, now I can see these data. I can do this test. It's going to add 10 negative tests. You still have to check it. It's still critical to check it. But if you have a startup or you have an enterprise company, but startups most likely today, because I would imagine enterprise is going to take a while for you to get comfortable with AI integrated into your code. If you don't have 500 to 1,000 API tests by the end of tonight, you could be sleeping so much more soundly knowing that you have complete coverage over your API, the business logic behind your API, all of it. Is this solution perfect? No. Is it headachey? Absolutely. Is it going to hang potentially trying to generate this? Sure. We're going to see. And it's done, right? Should return 400 if the email body is missing. So in this case, it's actually doing that. And the error message, let's call it, that you want it to return, right? Error email message should return 400 if the subject is missing. There is no reason why you should not have a thousand API tests. If you give me access to your code base, I can. If you have a QA team and they're not able to do this, I would question why, right? And I love QA folks. But the world is changing around us. If you're comfortable with AI being associated in your code base with a tool like Cursor, your QA team by the end of today should already have produced 500 new tests. Thanks for checking this out. I'm producing more content. Like and subscribe. The comments have been great. Check out workwithloop.com if you have any other questions or blogs. We're trying to push stuff up there too. Give me feedback. I have a whole set of future videos that I want to produce. I would love directional feedback. I feel very strongly about this because it's going to change the way that the world goes when it comes to testing. And to me, it actually is going to make testing that much more valuable. I, th I think that we're leading towards a world where there's two forms of psychology. There's the builders of the world and there's test test testers of the world. And the power that we have to do testing now is more than ever before. Get on board. It's exciting. Give me feedback. Thanks for the time. See ya. Bye.